Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafting with Slavi, where we make cards and other paper crafts. In today's card video, we are going to follow along with our cute squirrels from last week. Um, if you remember, this is the card I did last week linked above, and I stamped out two sets of the Let's Go Nuts um, stamp and die set from Lawn Fawn. And I also stamped out two of these wavy sayings saying happy birthday in, on the fancy baby banners. Um, now I didn't end up using this sentiment, but I did want to include it just for those of you who are following week to week. Um, now I did pre-cut everything. I wanted to share this part. I normally don't show you how I die cut my pieces that I use for my card, but I wanted to show you that when you have a backdrop die, such as the stitched wood grain backdrop like I do here, you can absolutely align your pieces and use that backdrop to, I guess, enhance your materials that you're gonna be working with. Okay, so to get the card started, I am using Lawn Fawn's Cloudy Stencil along with the Tumbled Glass Distress Ink. And note that I am ink blending the panel that's the add-on die for the Magic Iris. And this is gonna be a Magic Iris card. So um, I did ink blend the background just lightly with the tumbled glass going from the bottom to the top. I used all four sides and then I just went in lightly from the bottom because you're going to be able to see this whole background when I'm done with my card. We're using the birdhouse add-on as well today and that's what the piece on the left there is. Now to ink blend my wood pieces, I used vintage photo and gathered twigs for all of them. Gathered twigs just on the outside. If you want to, you can go heavy on that circle piece that I just had because that's going to be the interior. So if you're putting goodies inside of the birdhouse, like I did in this card, it makes sense for that um, circle to be a little bit darker. Now, whenever I make a magic iris, because everything I do, I make out of white paper, I do like to go around the interior of those rings so they're not stark white when you open up the magic iris. Okay, now the birdhouse add-on comes with all of these little flowers and vines and stuff. Um, so I'm using a combination of Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn and then Mowed Lawn and Rustic Wilderness to ink blend the grass. Ignore the ones that look like they have brown in them. I goofed, I didn't actually end up using them for this card. Now that panel that I had for the fancy wavy banners I did ink blend that with dried marigold and ended up not using it. So the tulips I'm ink blending with worn lipstick and then I'm using ripe persimmon here for these cute little flowers. And then I went in with wild honey for the inside of those flowers as well as the remaining flowers that I had um, for this set. I then wanted to have a bright and cheery background panel, so I cut an A2 panel out of the large stitched rectangle stackables. And I used scattered straw to ink blend the background. I did go in really heavy because I didn't want it to look blotchy. There was no um, other color that I used, so I wanted to make sure that I had really good coverage. Now, I uh, colored the squirrels and the grass very similarly to that video that I've already mentioned from last week. There are a few changes. Um, I use different colors for my acorns and I think I, oh yes, I actually didn't go all the way up to E35. So I used E35 to find my initial shadows, but when I went over all of my Copic coloring with the second layer, I only went up to E33 to darken that up. So it depends on how much contrast you're going for in your images. Um, for me, this worked for this card, but I also really enjoy the look of more contrast like I did in previous week's cards. So whatever you like. <laughs> Now I did exclude most of the squirrels here, but I did include um, this little squirrel because I did color the inside of his mouth with R24, which I totally missed the footage for last week's video um, that I did color the little guy's mouth with an R marker. 
And then from there, like I mentioned, I had a harder time blending these uh, squirrels out. I don't know why, maybe it was because I didn't go back to E35, um, but I just had to give it a little bit more elbow grease <laughs> than normal. And I feel like these stamps are super forgiving in terms of highlights and shadows. Um, so if you are looking for a great stamp set to practice on, this is a good one because there's lots of opportunities for shadows and I'm confident that I colored these differently than I did the previous week and they look fine. Okay, now for the colors for the leaves, I only used two color combinations whereas last week I used three. The two color combinations work for this card because we've got other stuff going on so it didn't make that much of an impact. But again, if you're looking for more of that contrast, you can absolutely include a, a higher contrast color in here as well like we did last week okay now we are just about through the coloring here so we're going to move on to the assembly i attached my panel to a top folding card just because i had some cardstock that was cut this way um, and you'll notice that i actually have a little bit of a gap there on the right it's a little bit bigger than a four and a quarter so i took out my trusty Tim Holtz trimmer here, the guillotine trimmer, and I just snipped that off. I cannot say enough good things about this trimmer, you guys. So if you don't have one, and again, I'm not a guillotine trimmer kind of person. I always find that when you use them, it warps the paper and it just, or it makes it move so then it's not a perfect cut and it just makes me angry. <laughs> Anyways, back to the card. So remember, I actually put this together so that the etchings would line up nicely. Um, now, the other thing that you can do, which I realized when I was editing this video, you can actually put this into the flex capacitor piece and you can die cut it all together to make sure that it's actually in the proper placement for when you attach your little nozzle as well. However, not necessary. This worked out fine for me. Um, it just depends on how, how <laughs> OCD you are because um, I know I can get pretty OCD and I'm sure you guys can too. Can you give me a like if you use crafting or watching crafting videos as like a stress relief? Because that's how I started. <laughs> and I mean, let's be serious. That's why I still need cards. Anyways, um, so then once that was done, I temporarily adhered the little sausage pieces with my washi tape and I attached um, these little um, tab pieces is that what you call them sorry I'm losing my words today um, to the back and I use liquid glue for that and of course me being me I use a ton of glue I'm pretty sure you don't have to use as much as I do but I don't want my cards ever falling apart they must be permanent um, and then I went in with the mini glue dots here and I use my um, my knife to put them onto the card and I'm just putting them over top of the little X's that are on the sausage pieces. And then you put a ring over top of that. And um, because I wasn't paying attention, I started putting glue on, but you don't actually do that next. You actually have to take these pieces, which move the sausage pieces um, into the open and closed position first. So I pretended there was no glue on that tab and I removed my temporary tape from all sides. And then I actually went ahead and I closed my magic iris. So I made sure that the, um, the three sausage pieces were in the same um, order that they were when I was um, doing that impression on them. But now I'm seeing which way I can orient them so that it makes the most sense. Um, because they're going to be viewed in the closed position. So having found where I need to put my tab, it's always to the right of that tab and you're kind of creating like a triangle, I guess. And I like to use two, just like with last week's card with the swish and pop where I reinforce that pull tab, anything that the recipient is yanking on, I like to reinforce it. So I use two, one on the top of that ring and one on the bottom um, it looks like it might get stuck but trust me it doesn't and I have found that for me it just gives that added layer of security and I haven't heard of anybody actually ripping it off my first attempts at magic magic iris there were instances where these little handles come off so I'm really happy that they don't seem to do that anymore 
Um, I then proceeded to add the third ring on top and I um, secured everything with those tabs. Then I'm adding this little piece, which of course is the pull tab. It comes with the add-on die. It's just because you need to cut off a little bit of that tab um, to not have it stick out of the card because it looks a little bit funny. And when that's all done, we are going to attach it to our card front. So you want to put it into the closed position. And in this instance, it doesn't matter where you put the glue. So put it all over the front, obviously not on the actual sausage pieces, um, but you can put it all over the front and then adhere it to your front panel. Um, once I have it kind of aligned, I like to open up the panel and make sure that it is perfectly aligned because you do have a little bit of give there um, for, before that glue sets. So you have a couple seconds before uh, you can't move it anymore. And then I started assembling my background. So I added foam squares. This is a combination of the half inch and quarter inch. And um, they're the regular size, not the thin size. So they pop up about two millimeters, I believe it is. And then there's a little stick, I guess, that the, the house sits on. And that one I adhered using thin foam squares. So there's a little bit of difference in that dimension there. And that's gonna become important later when we attach the sentiment. So then before I adhered the back, I attached this circle. Um, it is a good idea to attach this before you attach the top of the card, um, because otherwise you might have a really hard time sticking it through all those layers of magic iris. And I, of course, like to add things. So you might have noticed a little bit earlier that I had those little tabs on the back of the Magic Iris folded. That's so that they don't pop out and you can't see them. But when I tested the mechanism after applying these critters and the acorns, they got stuck. And you're gonna see that um, here shortly. You can see that they're folded. And when I did that, they got stuck. So I unfolded all of them and I actually went in and I trimmed off just a hair off of that one on the left there that you can see. And then I remembered that I actually needed to add a second layer of foam adhesive. And then those tabs, that's the only place where you can put glue. So I removed all the backing paper from the foam adhesive, attached it, having glued it down and just pressed and all is good. Um, again, as with most mechanisms, there are places where you can't have um, extra adhesive because it'll just make a god awful mess. Okay, so when I laid this out, I realized I hated the wood look of the awnings there. And I also did not like the color of the sentiment. So I went back and I um, die cut new pieces of this. I heat emboss the new sentiment with the pink peony embossing powder and I ink blended the sentiment using broken china distressing and kitsch flamingo distressing for the awnings. To add a little bit more color to this card, um, I did consult my color wheel like I've talked about before. I really enjoy consulting it because it helps me make color choices that make a little bit more sense. All right, now I mentioned last week that I wish that I had adhered um, the little tabs, I guess you could say, of the wavy banners um, for my sentiment so it wasn't quite so wobbly. So this was my solution. I still wanted it popped up, so I used the thin foam squares in the quarter inch size to pop this up a little bit. And it gave me just the right amount of dimension that I really was looking for. I then went ahead and I adhered my awning pieces and of course I removed everything off the top of the card so that I would have room to do that. And don't forget we still have all those vines to adhere. So I really wanted to incorporate all of that um, into this card. So these pieces didn't quite fit so I just cut a little bit off the corner and I just adhered direct adhered it directly to the card same with the other two and I just um, you know I'm I'm always so concerned about 
making sure everything is equal on either side. But in the case of this card, I didn't feel like that was really super necessary. I actually think that sometimes when you have an offset, it looks a little bit better. And then I went ahead and started adhering my little vines. Now I did leave out a huge chunk of this because you kind of get the idea and this video is getting a little bit long, so I didn't want to bore you to tears. Um, but I did also adhere all of the little flowers on. I didn't actually have any waste on this card. I used all the pieces that I prepared. Well, with the exception of the sentiment, but I set that aside for a different project. And um, those vines that were not the right color. You know what? I take that statement back. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so we're attaching all the little flowers. And then I started adhering my little squirrels. And... Uh, Actually, I think I may have done the sentiment first. Um, let's see. All right, and I'm attaching the acorn to my little guy and it was the sentiment first. So now remember that pole that the treehouse is sitting on is a half, it's a thin square. So I needed a thin square in the middle and a full square on either side of that sentiment because the, the sentiment is actually already popped up the full size of a square. So once I did that, I put uh, glue on either side of the banner, removed the backing, and I laid it down on the bottom of my card. And I could have put it on the top, but I prefer the look on the bottom just because those uh, squirrels are up at the top and I didn't want to take away from them. And I didn't want the cheering squirrel to take, um, to basically overhang the greeting. And then you'll notice here that I'm actually using two um, foam squares for the tail because there's two layers of dimension. So the magic iris itself is about... Oh, how did I think about this? Because it does work, hang on a second. So it was, the birdhouse is popped up and then there's also all the layers of the paper. All right, thank you so much for watching me guys. I hope you love today's card video. Uh, I just love the colors. And here's a couple fun new videos for you to check out and I will see you in the next one.